Hi, this is Zitesh and welcome to the NS3 video guide. Now, I was working with the Network Simulator 3rd version and I faced a lot of problem while installing it and working on it. So I thought let's make out some videos so that other people uh, should not face these kinds of problems. Now, first of all, what is NS3? And when you before uh, get started with NS3, you should be visiting this website, nsnam.org. And why should you choose the NS3? The first question arises out here. Now, you might be working with some of the protocols you want to redesign or reinvent your protocols, want to impl implement them or maybe simulate them. NS3 is the choice of preference for all of our such work because first of all, it comes up with an open source version and open source is always going to be the choice of preference out there. So you want to redesign some protocol, you want to implement them, test them, how much efficient they are, how much power consumption they are taking and all of such things can be worked out on the NS3. Now in these couple of videos, I'm going to talk about the installation and what are the problems you can face up with them. Now definitely it's not going to be a very long series out there just like my other series, but it will definitely will help you a lot. So let's talk about the NS3 and I would again recommend that before starting, go ahead and visit their official website so that you can take a deep look what's getting out there. Now, first of all, let's talk about the prerequisite, what you should have before working on with the NS3. Now, I would not recommend that you should go ahead and install NS3 on your Windows based platform or your Mac based platform. So you should be aware with some of the Linux basics. Don't expect me to go ahead and uh, create a series along with this for a Linux 101 series. It is not going to be that. You should be aware of some Linux basics. Again, I'm not saying that you should be a master of Linux, but some Linux basics would definitely would help you. Like you should be able to traverse along the directories, creating some directories, listening some of the files and all of that. So Linux basics is again a prerequisite. After that, you should have some basics of programming language. Again, you need not to be a master, but some of the basics about C++ would be a charm to work on with the NS3. You could also go up with the C or maybe the Python again would be a great choice, but some basics need, need to be out there. After that, you should be aware of the some of the networking basics. Of course, you are going to design a new protocol, maybe on the wired, wireless, want to test out some of the fields, how to change up the fields. So you should be aware with the some networking basics. Again, you should not be master in any of them. Go ahead and start the NS3, but these are the prerequisite you should have along with that. Now, after having the prerequisite, there are some tools of war that you should have to play around with this war. Now, you are maybe onto your Windows or your Mac, but you don't want to make sure that you are installing directly onto your system. There is a reason behind that. Now, I have many important files on my computer. And since I'm going to work with some new things, there are high chances you may corrupt out your Windows or your Mac. And you don't want to lose your all of your important files. So what we're going to do, we're going to take up a software and we're going to install entire operating system onto top of their software. Now, the great reason behind doing so is when anything goes wrong with your a virtual environment, you can simply uninstall that software and your original machine is going to be safe out there. So there are a variety of choices when you are working with that. The first choice is the VMware. Again, my favorite choice always out there. Now, there, is, there are two types of version being available with the VMware. The first one is the VMware player, which, which you can simply go ahead and download from this link. And the reason why I'm showing the VM player version is because it's free and free is always going to be the best choice. Now, if you're a professor at any universities or want to go ahead some spend some of the decades with the, uh, these kinds of network simulation and all of that, I would recommend you to go ahead and buy the workstation. Workstation is really a charm of work and you would definitely not regret every penny being spent with the workstation, but no uh, such pinky promises out there. You can go ahead and install the VM player as well. If you're not comfortable with the VM player, there is another choice, the virtual box, and it is being run and governed by the Oracle. You can simply go ahead and download that as well. But for all of my video purposes, I'm going to use the VMware player version. For the Mac user, you can have 
the parallel or maybe the fusion you can simply go ahead and download uh, the the fusion version of the mac from this link i have shortened the url so you can simply go ahead and install that as well again fusion is a paid version but definitely a charm to work on with now after these tools of war what we are going to use is we are going to talk about with the ubuntu version now there are great other choices like fedora maybe mint or other linux version you can work on with but Ubuntu will save you a lot of time. It is being highly compatible with the NS3, so you can go ahead and go with that. Now, for the Ubuntu, you have got a lot of choices, like there is a desktop version, there is a server version. But uh, during uh, some of the problems that I've faced in the past while working with NS3, I would recommend you to go ahead and download the server version. There is hardly any difference you will face at the first time and you will not notice any kind of difference between the server and the desktop version at the first go. So definitely you can go ahead and got with the server version. There are a couple of IDEs that we are going to work with it. Now the IDEs for our choice is going to be the Eclipse, but I would not say that you should go ahead and download that Eclipse right now because we are going to go ahead and take that on to the go. So these are the tools of war that you should have. Now let me go ahead and uh, check out the browser so that I can also show you the links from where you have to download the stuff. Now first of all here is the NS3 version that you should have. Now this is the NS3 that you can have simply. Now you should go ahead and definitely check with the NS3. After that there is a VMware. Now the player is buried deep down inside so you have to scroll a lot and at the bottom you will find there is a player version which is absolutely free. You can simply download the product and install that on your system. Definitely I'm not going to make a video for the installation of VM player because that's a simply exe file. Just double click on it, go next, next, I agree and simply stuff like that. And if you cannot do that, you should definitely not be watching this series because this series is not going to teach you how to install a simple piece of software on Windows. Then we have got the virtual box. There are a variety of versions for the virtual box for the Mac users, for the Linux users, for the Windows users. Go ahead and download any of that uh, shown here. After that, there is a Fusion also. You can download the Fusion just from here and can install that for the Mac users. And here is our Ubuntu. And I would definitely say again that you should be go you should go ahead and install the server version. And here is the LTS version, which you can simply see here. That is a long-term support version and definitely the choice. Now, again, a very simple uh, thing that you should know before going on to the virtualization is that go ahead and download the 32-bit version of the Ubuntu. Now, there is a reason behind that because your system may be 64-bit or maybe 34-bit. But since you're going to do a lot of virtualization, and you're going to install all of these things onto top of a software that 32 bit version is again recommended. So go ahead and download the 32 bit version of the Ubuntu, maybe desktop or maybe server. That's again a choice of preference for you. Go ahead and download any of that, but make sure that you download the 32 bit version for the very beginners go. So let's check out the next video so that we can work out on the installation of Ubuntu.